The problem we are solving today is a very interesting one. So stay tuned for this one. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you find this video useful. Before I begin, like every other HackerRank solution I have been providing, I've got my Jupyter Notebook on the right side of the screen for me to be able to explain things to you. And I've got the HackerRank platform on the left side. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open the collections named tuple problem for us to solve. So what you see on my HackerRank platform on the left side is the task explained. And this white area here in the middle is for us to submit the code and see if it works properly. So before I get into what the task is, let me talk to you about named tuples. Named tuples is part of the collections library. The first thing we need to do is to import named tuples. I will tell you what they are, but for now, go ahead on your Jupyter Notebook and import named tuples from the collection. We will say from collections, import named tuple. That's it. Now that we have imported it, I'm gonna show you an example that is actually the example that HackerRank has provided for us. The second thing I wanna do is to show you what named tuples are actually and where can you find more information. So if you get on Google and say named tuple collections Python, you should be able to get onto the docs page of the named tuples, which is this link down here. And if I click on named tuple, you will see that it returns a new tuple subclass named type name. I'll show you what exactly it means. I just wanted to show you there is a full page on named tuples. Back to the example I was gonna give you is with named tuples, we are trying to make a tuple that is named. That's exactly why we call it named tuple. First things first, we need to build a container which is not going to have any data in it. Just remember, first you build a container it does not have any data in it. So I'm gonna do what the example is actually doing right here. Just imagine in mathematical terms, I want to make a container for holding information about the coordinates on the coordinate map. What I will do, I will give it a container name, maybe call it point. And this in nature is a named tuple. So remember that. First, you make a named tuple container. There are two things you need to provide for that container. The name of the container, which I'm gonna call it point. Again, you can call it anything. And what attributes go into that container? What do you wanna store? For example, do you wanna store the X and the Y? Do you wanna store the X and the Y and the Z? What are you gonna store? In this instance, I want to store X and why. Let me just zoom into my Jupyter Lab so that it's more visible for the audience. I will store the X, comma, and the Y. There are two ways for you to store information. You can separate them using a comma, or you can separate them using a space. So I have gone with the comma at this instance. You can use a single space and that will do. If I run this, nothing is gonna happen. If I show you what point is, it's a point from a named tuple nature, and this one is the one we're talking about. Now that I have a container, which is called point with a capital P, I want to put data into it. What is my first point called? Maybe PT1, you can call it anything. So PT1, what sort of container is it? Well, it's a container of type point because that's what I've called it. And how many different attributes do I need for it? Well, I need an X and I need a Y. So I will store maybe number one and two in it. And then I will show you what PT1 looks like. You can see that PT1, which I have printed right here, is of the container type point. The X value is one and the Y value is two. That's it, that's named tuples. So now you may ask, can we store more data? Of course you can. So I'm just gonna go ahead, add a Z up here. I need to run that. And now this time I'm gonna say X is one, two, Y is two, and Z is also one. If I run that, now you can see there are three data points right up here. I'm not gonna go ahead with the actual example from HackerRank, but I think it's useful to make another point. It's again of the nature point, of the container type point. Um, maybe the X is three, Y is two, and Z is also two. Let me just make it clean. Print PT two, you will see that X is three, Y is two, and Z is two. So I hope so far this makes sense. If you think it did make sense, hit that like button for me. But now 
I will continue with the second example, which I do not need to import name tuple again. I've already imported it. But now this time we are building some car information. So again, build a container that does not necessarily have any data in it. I will call the container car and I will build a named tuple for that object. Again, give it a name, give it whatever name you want to give it and then provide what type of attributes for a car do you really want to input? Here I can see that there is the price, there is the mileage, there is the color and the class. I'm just gonna copy that across, paste it here. So we will ask the user or we will read from a database the price, the mileage, the color and the class. But you can see that I'm not separating them by a comma, I'm only using a space. I could use a comma, I could use a space, no problems. If I run that, it's an empty container. There is no data. I will car call my car. I'm not following hacker rank example. I'm making my own example. It's a car object. I need the price, the mileage, the color and the class. So let's start with the price. Maybe the price is 30,000 and I need the mileage. Maybe the mileage is 100,000. Um, the color white class is whatever, two. Oh, I made a mistake. This one needs to be a comma. If I run that, and then if I print my car, you can see that it's got a price, it's got a mileage, it's got a color and class. Now you may ask, how can we access that data inside my car? What if I want the price for my car? What if I want the mileage for my car? That's a very good question because there are multiple different ways to do that. So call my car, approach number one use indices. So if I call number zero, it will give me the price because that's the first one. If I call number one, it will give me the mileage. So this is one way of asking for information. The other way is actually going with the dot and then maybe price. You can do that too. Or you can go for color and that will give you the color. Two different ways of accessing information in a named tuple. I really hope that by now you understand what named tuples are. So they are tuples that are named and we can put attributes in them. Step number one, build an empty container. And step number two, start putting data into it. So this is exactly what we need to do for this task from HackerRank. What I will do quickly, I will clean my screen. Now, let's see what the task is. Dr. John Wesley has a spreadsheet containing a list of student IDs, marks, class, and name. So we know what information needs to go into the tuple, which is great. Your task is to help Dr. Wesley calculate the average marks of the students. So average is sum of all marks. So I need to access marks and then take the average. And there are two notes down here. Columns can be in any order. IDs, marks, class, and name can be written in any order in spreadsheet. So we don't really care about the order. Column names are ID, marks, class, and name. The spelling and case type of these names won't change. So everything will be as exactly here, which is a really good thing. The input format will be, we will receive how many students Dr. John has. So we will ask the user, hey, how many students do you have? They will be like, we've got five students. Then we will ask the name of the columns. Remember, we will start with the names of the columns or the fields or the attributes, whatever you wanna call them. And then we will receive the information about that class. If you think about it, we will receive three different things. The number of students, let me receive that quickly, n equals int of input. So whatever the user gives me, I will convert it to an integer and save it into a variable called n. If you haven't seen my video on variables, the link is up the top right. Once I receive that, I will go ahead and receive the name of the columns. So maybe I will call it fields and that will be input, but all in one line. I want to be able to break them into IDs, marks, um, name and class. So all I need to do is split that by space. What it will do, it will take this as one line and then break it into four pieces of ID, name, marks, and class. That's what exactly happens there. So far, I haven't really made any named tuples. It's just receiving information from the user. I will make a total marks variable for me to capture all the marks. For example, if I've got five students, I will have to add 97 to 50 to 91 to 72 and to 80, add them up 
and divide by number of students, which is five. I will start with zero, but I need a for loop and that for loop will one by one receive information from the user. So it will receive Raymond's information. It will receive Steven's information, Adrian's and so forth. So I need a for loop to receive them one by one, take the mark out, add it to my total marks, hold it, go to the next student, take the mark out, add it to my total marks, and at the end, I will have all the total marks, divide by five, and I'll have the average. Let's write for a student in range of how many students? We have five students, so I will put N right there. This is where I need to make a named tuple. So let's call it students is a named tuple. This is an empty container. I'm not receiving any information. Call it student and I know that what I will be receiving is stored in the fields. Fields are IDs, name, class, and marks, which I've already received from the user up here. Once you have the empty container, you go ahead and ask the user, hey, go on, give me the information. And the user gives me first time one space 97 space Raymond space seven. I need to store that. Once we have the named tuple object, the container created, there is no data in it we will select which attributes are gonna be coming from the user. So we will receive the marks, the class, the name, and ID, which will be part of the user's input. So input, once the input comes in, we split by space, and then we just make a new object for the name tuple is the type of students. So the container is called students, and I'm making a new student. I will feed the marks, class, the name, and the ID. Once I have a student data stored in the container, I need to get the marks of that specific student. For example, Raymond's student, Steven's, Raymond's mark, Steven's mark, and add them together. All I need to do is to get my total marks plus the student that comes in with their marks attribute, and I showed you how to access it. So this should collect all the marks together in one variable called total marks. All I need to do is just print the average, which is total marks divided by the number of students, which is N. So I will print. I only want to print up to two decimal points. Once done that, I will divide the total marks by the number of students. Let me just copy and paste the student information from the example on HackerRank. Uh, I need to convert this to an integer. That's my bad. Do it again. Paste it here. That's student number one, student number two, student number three, student number four. And I got 78 as expected based on HackerRank. I spend a lot of time preparing these videos. So if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow my audience. So what I will do right now, I will copy every single line of this code, paste it in HackerRank, take that line, paste it here, and take that line, paste it here. I'm just gonna go ahead and run the code, see if it actually works on HackerRank. It says, congratulations, so the first test case was successful. Let's submit the code and see if it runs multiple test cases. Look at that, that's all working. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a comment and tell me what you think and what other videos would you like me to make. Thank you.